You're here, I'm queer, and welcome back to my channel. For this video, I have collaborated with The Dolly Geek to bring you guys two dancing divas from the legendary game Busta Groove. It was just so much fun geeking out with someone about a childhood game and we just talked about the characters, the dance moves, all that jazz and so I'm really really thankful for this opportunity so make sure to check their channel out for their doll and uh, yeah I'll have their links down below. If you guys are unfamiliar with this game, it's basically like Dance Dance Revolution DDR but with a controller. Actually, it's more like Project Diva, but as a fighting game, and each dancer has their unique dancing style. And it's not Vocaloid. <laughs> this game was definitely ahead of its time since they incorporated a lot of moves from the ballroom scene, and it's one of my favorite childhood games. This is where we see a voguing cat celebrity and robot. Shout out to RoboZ for these Willy Ninja moves. The moves are so stylish and it fits the characters so much. And the character that I'll be making is Kitty Nakajima or Kitty N. Our celebrity Kitty's dance style is Vogue, Techno Jazz, and Funk. And when she's against Robo Z, it's literally like a lip sync for your life, especially if it's in Kitty N's stage. I literally have way too memories of pretending I was her when I was younger, so I'm actually really really happy that I can now make her as a doll. I kept her original look and I modified it a little since I really like her character design in the first game. They did change it in Busta Groove 2, but I definitely prefer the aesthetics in the first one. With that being said, let's bust a groove. Oh my god. For Nakajima-san, I will be using this Model Muse Barbie that I believe I got from either eBay or the thrift stores. It's really either or, but I'm using her because I've just been obsessed with um, Model Muse Barbies. I just love their pose and, you know, they're just so elegant and really model-esque. And Kitty N was definitely very, very tall. She was like giving me Betty Spaghetti vibes, you know what I mean? And for her head, I'm actually using a Mycene doll instead of the Barbie head. Um, I just feel like it's gonna make it more graphic, a little bit more anime, manga-esque. It'll definitely give it a more exaggerated video game type of aesthetic, and I just prefer it. And I, I like working with Mycene heads also, so I just thought it would be kind of cool. So let's go ahead and remove Barbie's head carefully <laughs> um, and put on the Mycene head. Now let's go ahead and prepare her by removing her hair and also her factory paint. And to remove the factory paint, I mostly use acetone, but you can also use nail polish remover if it has acetone in it. Let's take a break and move on to her feet. I will be sculpting everything, by the way, and so I want to make her some killer boots for this one. I want it to be big, not big like Bratz, but also not small like Barbie. So actually, very Mycene-esque. If I remember correctly, Mycene also tried to not only make the heads and features bigger, but also the shoes, like the feet. So it is very... Bratz like, you know, a little a hint of Bratz, so it's a definite hybrid of both. I'm using Warbla to act as a sole so that it's also easier to sculpt. Um, it will act like a guide and foundation for our new shoes. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take my heat gun to kind of soften and activate the Warbla so that it becomes malleable. And at this point, I will go ahead and kind of shape it onto the sole of our Barbie feet so that it kind of gets the, the form and everything. And we just wait for it to cool down. And after cooling down, we can now go ahead and apply super glue to it so that we can permanently glue it onto the Barbie's foot and obviously it's it's okay because we're gonna be shaping and uh, sculpting the new shoes anyway so this will be a good foundation to start with 
And for our clay medium, I will be using epoxy sculpt for this one. We just take two equal parts and we blend it together. And after a while, this will cure over time. And um, it's pretty cool. It's really cool on dolls because you don't have to bake it. And so I just apply that slowly but surely onto the new foot and for this shape i really wanted to have a go go boots type of look kitty Ann was definitely rocking some massive shoes massive go go boots while dancing on the dance floor and so i thought that was really really iconic and my job is to exaggerate it and make it a little bit more dramatic as i can so yep so the key for this is to really blend out and fade the clay onto her body, onto her legs, because you want that almost seamless effect. I don't think 100% it will be seamless, but you know, we can be at least 99% there. <laughs> and I'm kind of puncturing two pins in the bottom of her sole. This will act as a foundation for her platforms and heels. Um, I really do want to make this exaggerated and taller than her original look. And so, yeah, I feel like I would need foundation to help this kind of be intact. As you can see over here, I'm adding another layer of platform because I was like, you know what, let's just go for it. And yeah, it's it's happening. And the pin really does kind of help adhere the clay onto the sole. It's just, it's just there for foundation. I don't think it will hold it up, but it's definitely, it's there. And um, yeah, this took at least maybe a day or two um, because I had to wait for it to dry. And this is what we have. And I'm really happy with how tall it is. And I do need a pair of these in my wardrobe. And I'm just taking my super glue to glue her joints together because this will be a molded sculpted doll and I'm just adding some clay onto her hips just to blend everything together and obviously give it a little bit more of a different shape. And like her shoes, we are just gonna do our best to make this as seamless as possible. I don't think it will be 100%, but you know, well, you know what? Some people may be able to do it. So just do your best on it. Don't stress too much. And after a day of curing, we can now go ahead and work on her boots. And as you can see, I'm just sketching out kind of like the idea and how I want it to look. And yes, I am making it thigh highs because I just, I love thigh high boots. And I just kind of modified it, but kept the original style and design of Kitty N's boots. This part for some reason was so satisfying because I was trying to really make that point as sharp as possible. I don't know, I was like, I just found it satisfying when I was sculpting and I was like, oh my god, I can make this as pointy, as sharp as possible. Um, and I think it did, hopefully, in the end. You'll see. <laughs> And now let's work on her torso, and it's the same exact thing, I'm just sketching out the ideas and how I want it to look. And in the original video game, these were just kind of printed on the fabric um, for her bodysuit, they're not really anything. But I decided to kind of um, elevate them, make them a little bit more 3D, and it kind of gave it more of an armor, spacey type of look. And I'm just realizing now that it kind of looks like her second look in Busta Groove 2 where she's like a robot cat and I thought that was kind of cool. Kind of like, you know, pay homage to the second game, but not really. Because I really did not like her look there. I was just like, what is this? Um, but yeah. If you've played this game before, who is your favorite character? For me, Kitty Ann is my favorite of all time, but I also like Frida, Shorty, Kelly, Heat, Strike, and Hero. I like all of their songs specifically, and I definitely recommend that you guys check them out. They're like, way too good, like, I have no idea why. 
and I don't think she has anything in the back in terms of design or other color but white so I just decided to kind of mirror the one in the front and just gave her another type of V type of shape in the back I just thought it was um, equally leveled aesthetically and um, nice and so yeah I'm just adding this kind of like neck piece over here just to add more details to her high neck And I'm just taking my tape and I'm just cutting it at an angle and this will act as a foundation for clay again um, specifically for opera length gloves and this one is gonna be pointy very very Mugler style I think I just love opera length gloves I just love how long they are they elongate your arms they're so so edgy they're so so elegant as well it really depends on the textile the fabric that you're using for it and I don't know they just they're just so so amazing and I'm obsessed with them in my everyday wear well not everyday but in my personal wardrobe my drag wardrobe and also my dolls I just love them If you've been here for a while, you would recognize this mold, this orb mold that I made through my Powerpuff Girls series and it works for Kitty Ann's orb as well and as you can see I'm just kind of like stamping it um, onto her skin and I'm blending it as much as possible. I thought this technique would work a little bit better um, just because it'll be easier to kind of cure on skin and it would be a little bit more seamless. And yes, finally, we have cosplay in the House of Hex, and I'm so, so excited. This would have been perfect for my Ursula, like you guys have mentioned in the comments, but at that time, I wasn't able to purchase it, and so Ursula became a sculpture, but nonetheless, she is so, so beautiful. This one actually requires baking. It requires the oven. Um, epoxy sculpt actually cures over time like for hour just for hours and it'll be done so but this one requires an oven and i've been afraid of polymer clay for that reason um because you know I, I you're dealing with heat you're dealing with appliances so i'm kind of scared um but so we'll see we'll we'll try it with this one hopefully as you can see i'm just pinching it a little bit and it's very very soft and you don't need a gloves so hooray and to really make it poseable, I will be using wire for it. Oh my god, I forgot to mention, this will be her tail. <laughs> I wanted her tail to be poseable, well, you know, to some extent. And cos clay is the perfect clay for that because it does retain some sort of flexibility. There are limits to it, obviously. Like, if you make a 180 degree kind of line, for example, you made an arm and you want it to bend at least 90 degrees, that can work. Maybe even 60 degrees, but anything like lower than that, it would probably crack at the elbow. So just be very careful and mind that, you know, even though this does have flexibility powers, you still kind of want to work with it and not against it. You want to embrace it, you know what I mean? And I just wrapped the wire with clay and I'm just trying to blend everything together to make it as seamless as possible. I preheat the oven for 275 degrees and we bake this for at least 30 minutes. Like I used to make clay charms before but I never worked with polymer because you have to bake it and frankly my dad would not allow me to use the oven. So it was just so nerve wracking and also the fact that I'm using a food oven for clay, I'm like oh my goodness this it does not work in my mind. However I did reach out to cost clay and they say it was perfectly fine to use in the food oven. However if I do work with more polymer clay or cost clay in the future. I would need a separate oven solely for clay purposes, for crafts, you know what I mean? And after it cools down from the oven, as you can see, we have our tail! And I'm just bending it over here so you can kind of see the flexibility. And you know, I'm not gonna bend it too much or else it will definitely crack, but 
a little bends here and there, subtle bends, they actually, they're, it's, it's effective, it works. And so that her tail has something to kind of hold on to and adhere to, I'm just taking my hand drill and I'm poking a hole in the back of the doll. And this is actually a perfect fit. And as you can see, bloop, we can just super glue that later. Hopefully it will work. And um, yeah, it's holding it pretty well. And so this is kind of like the vision. As you can see, you can bend it, you can kind of pose it. And um, yeah, I love it so much. And now let's go ahead and sand everything. Let's make everything smooth. And I usually do this off camera just because it gets really, really messy. It gets really hectic. And just trying to record everything, it's it's messy. Um, but here we go. This one is the smooth finish, as you can see. Um, actually, it looks really rough on camera. But trust me, like, touching it, it's smooth. <laughs> I ended up adding this kind of um, another way to make it futuristic type of piece onto her shoulder um, just to kind of balance everything out, add a little bit more of interest in the design and it's also a way to make her joints kind of seamless and blend together. And so this is the finished product. As you can see, everything is sanded. And so now let's go ahead and move on to her head. This will also have a sculpted kind of helmet and hair, so let's go ahead and work on that. We want to work on the sculpting and all of that first before we get into paint jobs. For her helmet, I'm just using a warbler to kind of shape it up. Um, Kitty Ann's helmet shape was kind of literally her entire eye, and so I tried my best to kind of uh, render that into my seed head. And as you can see, I'm just protecting her face with tape because it gets really messy when you work with epoxy. And I just tried to make this as clean as possible, covering her entire head. And now I'm taking my silicone tool and I'm just kind of defining all of the edges, making them smooth and sharp and clean. And uh, yeah. And for her ears or her neko mimi, I will be using Warbla again um, to act as her ears. And I'm just shaping that up after I heat it and kind of like styling it to look like ears. And then let's go ahead and hot glue that onto her head. Um, I'm just using hot glue because I just needed to act as a foundation again. Um, the epoxy will be the super glue for this step. Okay, so you really want to be careful when you are doing this, um, if you try to recreate this, because, oh my god, that was so annoying. Um, I just had to re-glue it back on and work on it with extra care and just do our best to straighten everything out and really achieve the cat ear look. I'm taking this foil over here and I'm just rolling it up in shape and this will act as a foundation or a base once again but for her hair. And her hair is kind of like cinnamon rolls, it's kind of like a twist, a loop type of shape and so in theory this could have been done in cos clay or polymer clay so that it retains lightness um, because if you guys didn't know epoxy sculpt is very very heavy but um alas. This happened. And so I'm just trying to add the details there. All of the hair strands, I tried to kind of shape it up and add more details to it. So yeah. And now we can go ahead and carefully adhere it onto her helmet. And you want to be very careful because, like I said, it's so heavy and you want to really support it in the back, which is what my ring finger is doing. I'm just trying to support it uh, so it doesn't fall. But yes, we're going to go ahead and blend it and still add more hair designs to it. 
And of course, we need two of them, so I'm doing the same exact thing with my second hair piece over here, just trying to blend everything together. And then I'm actually manually making her forehead orb gem thingy. Um, this one is a little bit more angled down, and so I kind of had fun freehanding that. After her hair cures, I ended up covering it again with epoxy sculpt, and I feel like this makes more sense that her hair is definitely underneath a half helmet type of look so there's kind of like some logic to it which I kind of like and I, got, I really do like this look and now let's go ahead and add some color I will be painting everything well besides the cat cut out with white it will be a good base color to even everything together um, because obviously we have gray epoxies we have her skin color so I'm gonna paint everything with at least it's a lot of layers a lot of layers of white acrylic paint just to even everything together And now let's go ahead and apply the pinks. So her color palette is pretty much pink, blush pink, and also green. And it's just kind of really, really cool to see everything together. She kind of looks like, I don't know, it's giving me strawberry vibes for some reason. Um, but I just love it. I love this whole color scheme. It's just so, so cool, futuristic, and fun. Just so you guys know, even the pinks took uh, at least three layers to really make them so opaque. Um, and I obviously did not record all of them because that would have been so, so mundane. And I do clean it up off camera as well. As you can see, there were so many pinks that was on the white parts. And so that would be cleaned up. And right now I'm just kind of sketching out the design that I want for her boots and because I extended it a little bit I also have to extend the design and kind of change up the shape and I thought it still kind of worked and I loved how it looked. And now it's time to paint the orbs green. And so this is definitely giving me buttercup vibes. And so I'm just having flashbacks onto that doll that I made. <laughs> so, so cool. And yes, this again takes a little bit of while, a little bit of layers to build up. I am so in love with how tall those boots are and I really need them in my personal collection. And unfortunately, this will not be Christian Louboutins. They will not have red bottoms just because I thought the pinks was just so, so cute and it was needed. And now we are pretty much done with laying down every single color for her outfit. As you can see, she's so matte. And now I'm just kind of protecting everything. I did spray her entire body with Mr. Super Clear. And I'm just taping the edges to act as a mask so we can actually use pastels and add dimension to everything. So I'm gonna try and blush and shadow and contour her entire bodysuit. And oh my god, look at that. Yes, it's a good shadow. And I'm also kind of adding shadow to the white parts. And I believe I used light gray and also pink for some of the shadows here. The body blushing and also the shadowing was so, so effective, especially on the pink parts. It really made them pop, it really gave them dimension, and obviously it is fake shadows, but it definitely highlighted the texture of the paint job, the texture of the brush strokes, and I don't know, I just thought it was kind of organic, and it looked really cool. Thank you. 
I intended for the shades to mostly be on her legs. As you can see, she has this big piece of pink over here, this shape over here, and I thought that giving it a shade, making it artificial shadows will really make it pop and give it a 3D effect. And I do think that kind of happened and I'm really, really proud of how it turned out. Look at that, wow. Um, at least for me. Um, and I'm also giving her boots some gradient effect over here, a reverse gradient. And I'm just adding a layer of kind of like metallic powder used for resin to make her orb pop a little bit more. And for her tail, we cannot forget about her tail. I mix white acrylic paint with Mod Podge to give the paint a little bit more flexibility. And for the tip of the tail, I'm just painting it the same exact paint color. And moving on to her head, we're doing the same exact thing by painting everything but her face with white acrylic paint. And now let's give her that beautiful green screen hair color. <laughs> and like the body, we're just gonna go ahead and lay all of the colors flat first and then we'll add details to it later. And after the paint dries, I sprayed it of course with Mr. Super Clear and now we can add some shading, some pastels to it, really make everything pop. As you can see, the pastels are so effective with the orb and also the ears, it really just gives it more dimension and it's not as flat. And now I'm gonna go ahead and work on her face. And of course, like always, we wanna sketch things out first before we actually commit to any eye shape, any color, any style choices. Um, and so I'm using my brown watercolor pencils because it will be easier to erase if we make any mistakes. I definitely wanted this to be my take on Kitty N's face. In the 90s, literally, her eyes are so big, it's 90% of her face. So I was like, you know what, let's go for my tried and true. Smize, smiling with your eyes. Like, she may not be smiling with her lips, but she's definitely smiling with her eyes. And I like my dolls to have that. I like, I like them to have the smized, intense eye. And yeah, I'm playing around with colors for her eyeshadow because they really didn't show any eyeshadow for Kitty N. But I was like, you know what? Let's go for a light pinkish purple to complement everything else. And like always, we wanna work with layers and so I'm going back to her ears and I'm making it defined. And also now I'm defining her hair. I'm just adding some shadows to it. I'm really defining that loop thingy, that um, cinnamon roll type of design. <laughs> um, and I'm just adding some greens, some hints of blacks here and there. For some reason, maybe it was the weather, but this face was giving me a hard time and my pencils weren't coming off as opaque as possible. This was definitely only layer two if I remember correctly. And although in camera it does look like it's, you know, it's giving me pigment, but it definitely does not feel that way. And you can, you can tell, you can feel it when you are actually drawing on the face. It can either feel papery, like it's so smooth and papery that it's just the pencils are gliding, or it feels rubbery and it feels like you are drawing on a rubber band. And so for the longest time, at least maybe till layer four, layer five, it felt rubbery. But um, I mean, you know, you just, that's why you have to layer. That's why you have to layer. <laughs> So I gave her eyes kind of like a cat-like pupil, even though I don't think she is an actual cat. I think she's just human that, um, like I think her image is just like a cat woman. 
Um, but you know what? She, there's contacts. Contacts exist even in game, anime, manga world. So she can have her cat eyes. <laughs> So, I just realized she looks like Gumi from Vocaloid. Um, you know what? It's just the hair. It's literally just because of the green hair, but literally if she was wearing orange, she would be Gumi right now. <laughs> okay, so I just googled Gumi just because I wanted to make sure that she does look like her. Well, because she has green hair. But oh my goodness, the voice provider for Gumi her name is Megumi Nakajima. Nakajima! Oh my god, it's the same as Kitty N! Kitty Nakajima! Oh my goodness. Coincidence? Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> and to give her skin some pop, I'm using this metallic pigment powder in pink. And I'm actually mixing it with white as well, but it's just so cool. It's such a good highlight for dolls. Oh my goodness, look at that. That is frozen. Wow. Um, it's really cool. I like to apply it on the nose, the cheeks, and also the chin, sometimes even the forehead. Um, I like to apply it everywhere. <laughs> and again, with white acrylic paint, I'm gonna go ahead and give her some catch lights. And just for the sake of it, I'm adding the same exact green pigment powder that I used for the orbs onto her hair. I thought it would be kind of cool. It would be a good highlight also. You know, I don't know. Why not? And now let's give her a little bit of lashes. I cut out two pieces, literally it's just two per eye, um, of these human fake lashes. And it's perfect for Kitty N. And I'm also going to go ahead and gloss up her lips. And now to really emphasize the futuristic, spacey, superhero, Catwoman type of look, I'm gonna go ahead and gloss literally every single thing. Well, except for her and also her hair. But everything else will be glossed up with Liquitex Professional Gloss Varnish. Oh yes, even her tail. And this actually took a while before it was really, really glossy, like high gloss. And so I did this four times, four layers of gloss, and that did the trick. And now we're done with Kitty N. Kitty N versus Kelly! Kelly.